Good morning, SHS. I'm Andrew Clark Hodgkins, and my co-anchor today is Ethan Bodenrader. Thanks, Andrew. Today we have a lot to talk about, including student predictions, best quarantine movies, swim team state results, unemployment and working for teens, and much more. First off, we have a COVID-19 update presented by our fellow students Mike, Ethan, and yours truly. So obviously staying home is the first thing, um, but you know, everyone's home now, and I think there's a mental stress on everyone, parents, students, teachers. I mean, this is such a unique situation for all of us. Um, we have worked with our guidance counselors and we have pushed out some resources for people to go to and use just to help um, get through this, really. It's, um, I think as long as people stay in their houses and practice social distancing, they'll be safe. But I think it's more of um, you know, a mental thing right now for a lot of people having to stay in it's essential that we stay connected with people virtually, but I would really direct students and parents to uh, the school website pages, um, especially at the high school. Um, Mrs. Burke and the councils have done a great job of putting some resources out there, and I think those will be helpful for people. And, um, you know, the counselors, if you're struggling, you should know. Uh, you could call school or email a counselor. They've been set up with uh, certain phones, so they can be accessible at any time. Uh, they can get back to you. Uh, so we're, they're still connected. So if a student is struggling or in crisis, they should definitely reach out to the school counselors. So I think we're all hopeful that we'll come back at some point, even if it's just for a week or two at the end of the year, if not sooner. Um, I know the superintendent also, he always takes, um, you know, what the governor's suggestion is or what the requirement is that he's put out. You know, initially it was April 6th and now it's May 4th. Uh, so he will take into consideration what the governor says, what the CDC recommend, recommends, what the Department of Health and Human Services recommends. Um, we just have to wait and see. I, I would guess probably by the middle or end of April, we'll have a sense if we're going to be able to come back May 4th. It would be great if students could come back and wrap up the year even for a short time, especially the seniors. I think that's what is on everyone's mind right now, graduation and prom, and will we get any of those things in? And we plan to get, um, if we can't come back to, we've been thinking and how can we recognize seniors um, at graduation, some form of graduation. Wow, it's crazy to think we might be doing distant learning for the rest of the school year. It really is. Next up, we are going to be talking about the students' predictions on how this bizarre situation will play out. Students everywhere have been forced to adapt to a new educational structure during the coronavirus pandemic. Schools everywhere all over the country, including New Hampshire, have been extremely proactive, transforming teaching and developing new technology to create remote learning. But how long will this last and what will the future hold? We have got the opinions of Salem youth to see what they think will happen during the next few weeks as this historical time unfolds. What are your thoughts on quarantine so far? So, so far it's been, it's been an experience. I think that we're handling it in a good way. I think a lot of people are very bored right now because no one's really doing anything. I feel like the rules need to be more strict. It's weird like not seeing my friends every day, not seeing my teachers every day, not going to school in general, but still learning the things that I need to learn just to get the credits that I need to graduate. How long do you think this will last? I think that it will last through the summer, if I'm going to be 100% honest, because we haven't figured out who has had it, who hasn't had it. If they haven't had it, we haven't figured out vaccines for it yet. It's only the beginning of April, and it seems like things are getting worse. If things start to get better, I think we're going to go back May 4th, because that's still like a month away. I think our economy will be back on May 4th, but I don't think we'll be back at school for the rest of the year. How do you think this is going to affect society? I think that it will affect society positively because we will be getting vaccines out of it. 
uh, new inventions that are going to be created because of it. Especially with the economy, if we keep this up and we're staying out of work, we're going to go into another Great Depression. So I don't think our society is going to be good at all. I think people are going to like start appreciating things more, like be able, being able to like go outside and stuff like that. It's not just like the United States that's going through this. It's like everyone. So everyone's just trying to like help out. So, yeah. Personally, I believe that we will not return to school this year. Fortunately, this is all occurring in an era full of technology, allowing us to communicate with teachers and friends. Even though we are indoors, we do not fall behind on schoolwork. We're keeping in touch with our classmates via Zoom. However, this week, SHS Today's Alfredo and Katie are going to show us some fun things other than schoolwork that we can do during quarantine. stresses that schoolwork gives, it's nice to know that there are some fun alternatives. The coronavirus has been talk of the table for weeks now. Taking a more positive route, SHS Today's Nina presents us with the top 10 movies to watch during quarantine. Hey movie fans and welcome to Films and Flash. Today we're going to be talking about some movie recommendations to watch during quarantine. There's going to be 10 of them, and keep in mind that some of these are my opinion, and some of these I've also found on some like lists out there, and I tried to keep them available for everyone with streaming services such as Netflix, Disney+, Plus, yada yada yada. I also kept in mind that people have different tastes in movies. There's some horror movies in here, some romance movies, so yeah, anyways, let's get started. So let's start off with the infamous series of Harry Potter. So I am a big Harry Potter fan. And all eight movies creates a 18 to 19 hour experience that you will never feel ever again. And it's a great time waster and just it's such a good movie series. You follow Harry Potter as he journeys through the wizarding world and tries to defeat the evil Lord Voldemort. It's a really good series. I highly recommend it and I just really love it a lot. And it's a huge time waster to do during quarantine and amazing to watch if you are bored. Another movie that I will be discussing is Circle. So Circle is a movie on Netflix. You just look up Circle, it's the second one there. And it's about these about 50 people who are all stuck in a circle. And they actually figure out that they have to vote on who dies next. And every two minutes they have to vote on whoever is going to die at that time. But the thing is, there's like people with all different morals. There's like old people, there's a teenager, there's a pregnant lady and a seven-year-old child. So it's really all about morals, the movie. And they actually stay all in that one room. And it's like, it's so amazing how you can stay in one room with the same people over and over. And they just, there's barely any other sets except for the ending. It's just amazing to me how they can create such a great movie just in one room with like a couple red arrows. It's honestly an amazing movie and the characters, you either hate them, you love them, or you just want them to die a very fiery and burning death. So um, that's another great movie and the ending will have you shocked. Another movie recommendation is the movie Wreck. This is for all you horror movie fans out there. It's basically a movie where this reporter 
is stuck in an apartment building that is under quarantine. She was going in with a bunch of firefighters and she, you know, gets stuck in there with a bunch of people who have this kind of rabies kind of illness. This is a Spanish film though, so like there's subtitles and like some ad libs out there. There's also a remake of the movie for American people called Quarantine and they sometimes use the exact same shots, it's just with the different actors and stuff. It's actually pretty accurate. Tape everything, you hear me? Tape everything! No, 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 no. To the movie, but I would still recommend the Spanish version because like, I just like it a lot better. I don't know what it is, but basically they're stuck in this quarantine apartment building and they have to get out before they are brutally murdered by some kind of like zombie kind of illness people. Another very good movie to watch is a movie called Oculus. Now, this movie I watched on my birthday, and let's just say that this movie, the ending, is amazing. Hey, little brother. This movie is all about the sister and brother, and basically they're both their parents got possessed by this mirror when they were small little children. And so they basically, they've been trying their whole life to find this mirror and destroy it for good. So they finally find the mirror and the mirror like makes them have hallucinations and they like even can't see each other at some point. There was this scene that made me squirm so much. It's in the trailer where like she eats an apple but then it turns into a light bulb and then it turns back into an apple. It's, it's an amazing movie and I just, I really like it. That's really down to personal preference in a thriller. And I just, I just think it's a really good movie. Another movie recommendation is The Hunger Games. So this like whole series is just really good. It's a four movie experience. It's almost kind of like Harry Potter. It's a really good time waster. And like the story is amazing. My personal favorite is Catching Fire. And so it's just basically you follow Katniss Everdeen and she like lives in this kind of dystopian world where like every district has like a woman and a male. Um, tribute every single year to fight to the death and so I just think it's a really cool movie and a really cool time waster to watch during quarantine. I will definitely be watching these two movies probably this weekend, that's what I want to do. So yeah. Another movie recommendation, I actually haven't seen this film but it's on one of my like to watch lists, is called The Platform. So I believe it's on Netflix. It's basically where it's a prison where every single month you change to a different level of the building and the higher up you are, the better food that you'll get. And I think like the bottom floor has like scraps that like the upper floor has. And so it's it's a really cool movie. It's another Spanish film, but I think it's like ad-libbed and like dubbed and everything. We follow this guy who tells us his story about the experience that he's had. And like, I've heard that this movie is really shocking in some kind of ways. And I just think it's probably a really good movie to watch. Um, at least from what I've heard, the reviews are pretty great. Although it is a Spanish film, so. A another recommendation that I have is a movie called Freaks. So it's a movie about a little girl who is locked up by her dad inside of the house because she has superpowers. So let me just tell you that the acting from this little girl, like this little actor, is probably one of the best like acting acting from I've seen from a child in like ever. It's extremely like it's a really good movie. Another one is just Disney. Just the Disney trilogy. Um I personally would like to binge watch all of the princess movies one of these days just to all the way from Snow White all the way to like Frozen 2 or something. And I just think that it's an extremely big time waster just to go through Disney Plus or like whatever free movie website you guys are using and just like watch all of them. I think it would be a really cool experience to do that. And I believe that it will be a really fun and cool experience to share with your family or just by yourself in your room. And for our last film recommendation of the day, this is for all you romance lovers out there, Titanic. Um, this is the only romance movie that I can actually bear to watch. I hate romance with a burning passion, but this is for all you guys, so. Titanic is basically about Rose and Jack and they fall in love, but like it's kind of like a forbidden romance kind of thing. And of course, since it's called the Titanic, the ship is sinking. <laughs> And so I just think this movie is like, I think it's like three or four hours long. It's just a really big time waster and six hours of like pure fluff. Well, not pure fluff. There's like drama in there and whatnot. 
it's just, it's a really good movie to watch. It's the only romance movie that I can watch, so I mean. So anyways, that's been Films in a Flash. I hope to see you all next time and stay safe, everyone. Wash your hands. We have all been glued to television lately. Thankfully, streaming services like HBO are allowing the public to watch for free for the month of April. With everything that is going on, SHS Today's Robert and Taylor have a seemingly infinite amount of conspiracies concerning COVID-19. Let's dive into it. Hello and welcome back to the Dark World of Conspiracies. For today's edition of Controversial Conspiracies, we're going to be talking about the recent outbreak of the coronavirus. Before we begin, anything we discussed in this is theories and only theories. Do not take anything as fact. And now let's begin. As literally everybody knows, we are living in crazy times right now. We're all indoors. Businesses are closing down. Schools close. Literally the entire world is just shut down. And with the craziness of the world has sparked a lot of new conspiracies over the coronavirus. Some of these conspiracy theories include coronavirus being made in a lab, it being spread from 5G towers of all things, and even Bill Gates having some involvement with the coronavirus outbreak. All these having next to no evidence, but there's something to think about. One of the theories that I thought was very interesting is about how the coronavirus was planned for decades. On one of the last segments, I talked about predictive programming, which is about the media putting in certain things in TV and movie to ease the idea of certain things with symbolism. So on Twitter pointed out that actually the logo for a Chinese biotech lab actually looks very similar to the Umbrella Corporation and Resident Evil. In Resident Evil, the Umbrella Corporation is actually a pharmaceutical company that created a virus that spread in the city known as Raccoon City, which the same person pointed out that Raccoon is also an anagram for Corona. But of course, with a couple of Google searches, this theory immediately gets this proven as one, this bio tech lab actually has not been in operation for a while and the person who pointed out the anagram also forgot that raccoon has two c's not one c i'm very skeptical about the coronavirus specifically about how the media takes it a lot of these theories do not have any evidence to back it up so i kind of just throw them away but i'd like to tell everybody please wash your hands you know practice social distancing and don't believe everything you see wow some of these conspiracies are crazy they seem irrational at first but considering the facts they don't sound as crazy as before Conspiracies can be crazy, but do you know what else is crazy? The fact that most people are unable to work right now. This next segment brought to you by Alyssa, Gemma, and Sarah covers how potential employed teens are coping with the virus. Hi, I'm Emma Sheedy. I'm a senior at Salem, and I'm going to be answering a few questions about how it is to work during this pandemic. How do you feel about going to work during this national pandemic? It's definitely not my favorite thing. I would much rather be home with my family, but I know by going to work, it's helping customers and employees that work in our store. I help employees because I'm limiting their hours just by working and customers by being able to get them out the door fast. How does your family feel about you being deemed as an essential and having to work during this? At first, my family was a little skeptical. They weren't sure if I should stop working, limit my hours. That was definitely a big decision during this because they wanted me to be safe and they wanted to be safe because if I'm working, that puts them at risk in case I get it. Um, but in the end, we decided I was going to still work because I'm an essential employee and people need me. So now they're proud of me for going to work <laughs> through this because it's it can be a little scary. You know, because you never know. You see different people all the time, so. In what ways have you changed your everyday life at home in order to keep the family safe? We constantly use hand sanitizer and wash our hands. Definitely hand sanitizer more often. We try to only send one person out of the house to get um, our essentials, like groceries. Normally, it's just my mom. And when she comes home, she washes her hands before she leaves the store. She uses hand sanitizer. She tries to stay as clean as possible. Even if we just go out for a walk, we just hand sanitizer, wash our hands. Anytime we think we could have contracted any germs, we just wash our hands. How busy is Market Basket on a day-to-day -day basis? It definitely depends on the day. I work Tuesdays and Sundays. Sundays are definitely a little bit more busier than Tuesdays. Before all this started happening, it was definitely a lot busier, but people are starting to buy more at once so they don't have to come keep coming back to the store. How many hours are you usually made to work per week? I normally work about 10 hours a week. I work 
four on Tuesdays and I work six on su Sundays. So only 10 hours. I've definitely limited my hours since working and the store has also limited their hours. The store also only lets, I think about 200 people in at a time. It gives more time to clean, restock the shelves because it's been crazy. The past couple weeks there, we're out of stock of like a lot of different things. I was working anywhere between 20 to 25 hours per week. I work at Market Basket in the dairy department. I was forced by my parents to take a leave of absence, which I wasn't pleased about at all. It, I put up a huge fight about it because I didn't want to leave. I'm spending my time at home organizing my bedroom. The weather's been super nice, so I've been going out for runs a lot lately, and I've been going out tanning a little bit too because of how sunny it is. I've also started watching The Office, which I love it. I love it. I used to trash on The Office so much, but now I could not picture my life without The Office. Like it definitely makes this quarantine a little bit more tolerable. Yes, I do miss working. I miss working a lot. I miss not only my coworkers in my department, but my coworkers like in other departments too. I miss everyone. I miss my manager. I miss the store. I miss the company. I really do want to go back. I'm I miss everyone so much. I really do. I miss I miss working more than I thought I would miss working. Definitely. I definitely miss my job. As for spending my money, I don't really spend my money anymore because I don't have that check, that paycheck at the end of every week. However, my birthday is coming up, so I got a few early birthday presents from my family and I got money. So I recently just went online shopping and don't plan to really spend any more money. I'm being cautious with my money. Thank you to everyone who tuned in to this rendition of SHS Today. Once again, I'm Ethan Bodemreiter. And I'm Andrew Clark Hodgkins. Stay safe, Blue Devils. We hope to see you guys soon. Question is, how are you taking the quarantine? Serious or not serious? And do you enjoy social distance or not? I started taking it more seriously because I just got word that my grandma had it in New York and my other family too in Boston. And they said that it's terrible. It makes your body tired. And um, all in all, it's just like not too good of an experience. How are you taking the quarantine? I mean, I'm taking it pretty okay. I mean, like, I'd rather be outside and hanging out with my friends, but like, I mean, this, it's okay. I'm just kind of watching TV and stuff. With, uh, with the social distance, distance aspect of it, I'm not doing too well, to be honest, because I've always been used to just going out and playing sports and all that. I'd rather like be with other people and I'm kind of bored of being by myself, but like, I'm just like trying to keep occupied, but it's like, kind of hard to, because there's like nothing to do. But I find ways to cope with being inside. So most of the time I'm inside listening to music or just on the phone with friends. Um, I just play video games and I like watch TV, but I mainly just FaceTime my friends all day. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. All gotcha. right, well, thank you for the interview. Of course, of course. The legendary interview. Yes, sir. The best one. Of course. Peace.